This video is of the public workshop held at the Tampa Marriott Hotel in regards to the Florida Department of Transportation Supplemental Environmental Impact Statement. Listen in. Talk about uh, this entire public workshop. So what is this? So, so we're in zone one, there's nine zones total. Uh, this is the first zone, talks about the introduction of the Tampa Interstate Study started back in the late 1980s and all the different elements and milestones that have gone thus far. Uh, we introduced what the long-term preferred alternative was back in 1996. So what was which, that long-term Which identified alternative? both uh, express lanes uh, with the high occupancy vehicle transit way in the center uh, and then the general use lanes to the outside. That's basically as you're driving in each direction, north or southbound or eastbound or westbound, with the transit way. Is that three, three lanes or just that? It was, at this point, it was three lanes. We just sliced a, a particular spot, uh, okay. I think in the West Tampa area, somewhere around there. Okay. Um, we've got uh, uh, some of the impacts that were present in the Tampa Interstate Study, which was broken up into segments, 1A, 2A, 2B, 3A, and 3B. So essentially working your way from west to east, from the Howard Franklin Bridge to Hines, then Hines to Rome, Rome to up 275 to north of Martin Luther King, and okay. then across I-4. Okay. We've got the commitments uh, that the FDOT committed to as part of the original study. Uh, and those elements, oh, I urban, that. Design, urban design guidelines, relocating historic structures, right. those kind of things. Just to let everyone know, it's, it's more than just what we're here tonight. Sure. Um, second zone talks about the supplemental environmental impact statement, which is what's going on right now. Can you, yeah, let's say, go ahead and explain. What is a supplemental, supplemental environmental impact statement? Sure. And SEIS is essentially taking the original study and we're reevaluating it. So oh, okay. we're looking at new options or new alternatives and assessing the impacts today that may be different from what they were 20 some years ago. Okay. Uh, so we follow the National Environmental Policy Act like we do with all e and &E studies. Uh, we go through the different components of how we've done that. We're right now at a stage of doing the alternatives analysis, but we've got draft documents and studies and that'll move into uh, uh, publishing a draft supplemental EIS uh, later in the year. Later so in this year, this, Yeah, a lot of this information will then be contained in that master document. Okay. Study schedule shows where we are in the process mm -hmm. with public workshop today. Uh, and then, really, how are we going to make a, a determination of which option to move forward? It's, it's not a simple decision. Uh, but recognizing that there's not money today to build it, uh, there is uh, funding currently available for the Northwest Expressway in the first segment of right-of-way acquisition. Which right is the now, first segment? Which was the Howard Franklin to basically the West Shore area. Okay. okay. Um, but it's not currently funded in the next five years for construction. Okay. okay. Uh, we'll come back to these. Okay. Let's turn and go back behind. We're going to turn and we're going to go behind and go over here. And so, Jeff is very kind to walk us through all this. Go to zone number three. So we're really trying to identify and show some of the issues and problems and why looking at this is important from a safety perspective and what's the purpose of the need. So we've identified some crash issues, uh, some operational issues. So when you say crash, show us, show me what, what, it, what I'm looking at. Sure, this map, there's... This map shows oh, north and eastbound uh, crashes sorry, that have occurred over the last, uh, from 2012 to 2016. And the red spots are where there's a higher propensity for crashes to occur. Okay. Uh, so this is in the north and eastbound direction, and then the map below shows in the southbound and westbound direction uh, where those spots are. Uh, it helps us identify where problems in the areas exist. Okay. And where either it's a congestion issue or it could be a geometric issue. Okay. Uh, so the biggest problem I see is malfunction junction. Why the Hillsborough River? I'm curious. Why, why there? Why is there a... Um, that's there because the Hillsborough River has... Uh, it's required to have a 45-foot clearance. So it's higher location than other locations on either side. 
so the, the road kind of comes up and it may be difficult to see over. And that causes the it accidents. It causes slowdown of traffic, congestion, crashes, you might not be able to see what's over the hill. Okay. Uh, those kind of things. And with the... Uh, our famous malfunction junction? Uh, in the downtown area, we show sharp curves with limited sight distance where some of the sharp curves exist down below. So are those sharp curves actual accidents that happen? No, they should be what the, the condition of the roadway is. Okay. So they're sharper than what they should be for the design speeds. Okay. Um, and then roller coaster effect is where we have um, bridges we're getting clearing over and you might not be able to see over it very well, so you end up going up and down lots as you're driving oh, okay. instead of more of a... a so we're not doing those anymore, are we? Uh, well, that's roller the coasters. Idea. We don't want to do more roller coasters. That's the idea. All right. In the West Shore area, there's essentially one build option, but in the downtown interchange, we have... So West Shore, when you said West Shore interchange, can you explain what that is? Sure. Um, and I'll show you a little bit better, but it's essentially from about the Howard Franklin Bridge uh -huh. over to the interchange at State Road 60 that goes up to the airport. Oh, okay. okay. And it includes the West Shore interchange itself up to about uh, Dale Mabry or so. Okay. So that's essentially the extent. Okay. In that area, we essentially have one option. Which is the option uh, that they're going. Is, uh, again, I'll show you those over Okay, there. all right. Uh, downtown interchange area, we have four options. So these are four options. So options A, B, and then C and D. Uh, What's a, the difference? A and B, uh, essentially in the downtown area from about Rome up through Martin Luther King and then over to about 21st, uh -huh. we'll be rebuilding uh, the lanes that are there, uh -huh. making space, so moving them out to make space for express lanes in the center. And then in the center of that, an opportunity for a transit envelope of about 40, 45 feet, which would run along the center, all the way through the downtown area and then out I-4. The difference between A and B are, in A, there's a connection into the express lanes from the north, uh -huh. not all the way past Martin Luther King, but an entrance ramp. Uh -huh. uh, in option B, there's no green going north, so there's no access connection. So okay. the way to get in and out of the express lanes, in option B would be to uh, basically filter through the downtown area. Okay. Which is where if someone's coming from the they're coming from the east. Out. They're coming from the east they want to go downtown. Option C and D are ones where you see more white in the center and that's existing lanes that are there today. And uh, the express lanes would be constructed in option C to the outside so they'd be to the south and to the east of what's there today. Okay. And then we flip it in option D to go either to the north and to the west. So okay. we're comparing the impacts of all these different options to see which one, you know, how they relate to one another. Okay. So those are the four options. Okay. We've got a series of boards and displays that talk about traffic. Um, some of again, them give more, you know, actual numbers of how many vehicles per day. Uh, if existing traffic, for instance, um, uh, I'll just pick a spot here in the West Tampa area. So in 2018, there was 246,000 vehicles per day crossing, uh -huh. uh, driving on that road. If nothing's done, it'll grow to 288,000. And then in the build options, it's about 308. Uh, that accounts for the traffic on the express lanes plus the general purpose lanes. So just, this is where I would get a little bit from generalistic to a little question. This is only, this. these figures are based on the fact that we are uh, just growing with traffic. These, this does not take into effect what might happen with Brightline, or what might happen with Hart, what might happen uh, with CSX. Is that incorporated this, into this these numbers? This takes into account the long-range transportation plan for Hillsborough County. Mm -hmm. So those roadways that would already be built in any transit uh, elements that are included in the long-range transportation plan. Okay. Um, we then take that information and are looking at what the operations might be. So we look at both what the average speeds uh -huh. would be if we did nothing versus any of the other options. So in this example, AM and PM, we have if nothing is done, 20, uh, we'll go 2045. 2045, average speeds will be between 20 and 23 miles an hour in the peak hour. From which, in which areas? If, if nothing is done, average over the project. Okay. And then with option A, those speeds increase to about 41 to 38, and then in option C and D, they're uh, a little bit less. Okay. And then we also look at delay per vehicle per mile. 
uh, as well as graphing those. So it gives a, uh, an idea of what people would realize and how fast they'd be going and how much delay they might realize. Um, we have travel times we're showing in various locations uh, from point to point. So on this R and H, it would be from R to H out to Howard Franklin Bridge. Uh, R to T uh, would be the, the yellow one. Uh, and it provides um, peak hour travel time. So it shows how much travel time it may be taking these different movements. Okay. And then we also have where we looked at not only the interstate, but also what happens on local streets. Okay. So what's a delay or volume reductions on the local streets with different options? So A and B, uh, we'll just pick a point on Columbus here near McDill, where A and B will reduce traffic by 17% mm -hmm. and C and D by 15%. So we've looked at a number of different locations within the, we'll call it the city grid. Right. So, and over here, this is what? This is this Florida? In the downtown Florida. Florida. Right. So, with all of them, it looks like what? A and B? A and B provide a little bit better reduction uh -huh. than C and D do. And A and B, just to go over back, which was A and B? A and B were the ones that had the. Sure. Okay. Ah, A and B. Here we go. So, A and B had rebuilding the interstate. Uh, with the express lanes and then the connection going north or not. Okay. Versus building the express lanes to the outside of what's there today and not necessarily rebuilding okay. uh, that. Right. So. that. That helps because sometimes, you know, you're talking about stuff and you, you, you forget. What the heck? All right, so we go on to. Come around the corner here. Uh, the Tampa Heights Greenway was a commitment of the original study. We just saw how the Greenway would be accommodated in all four different options. So, so where, Greenway, what is the Greenway? Greenway involves both the trail system to connect essentially from uh, Columbus is this, Drive. Is this, the Greenway is this? Uh, no. The Greenway would be within the lighter green. Okay. Uh, and that would be a combination of um, serving as a buffer to the Tampa Heights community reconnecting some dead end streets that currently don't connect to one another reconnecting as how? well as um essentially if you had uh one of the side streets that end, ended at the interstate and didn't go anywhere you would reconnect it with a gross grove avenue uh, so it doesn't dead end anymore it's connected to a street that goes north uh, so it would be like what, what is it like taya Faro? taya Faro is a side street goes north south yeah. Yeah, and something it stops still comes and starts. Through, right. Yeah. So that would help, and then also to provide a, a a trail through there as well, bike trail. There's currently a trail that exists for part of it, but this would extend it. You know, okay. The balance. Okay. Um, all the options in the downtown area have a little bit different in terms of impact to certain parks. We have uh, Julian B. Lane Park, uh, where there's a small clip of, of right away would be needed at the far north end of the park. Uh, wouldn't impact any of the park services, but we want to identify that uh, that would exist, as well as Perry Harvey Senior Park, where there are differences between the downtown options. So where's the Perry? There, Perry Harvey Park is right at Orange Avenue, Scott Street, so it's just south of the interstate and just a little bit to the east. Um, and along Central is the east side and Orange is the west side. Um, in options A and B, we have a small clip of right away in the corner, which might require a couple parking spaces uh, to be relocated. Uh, option so D. Hold on a second. Let me look at this. When I'm looking at this here, and I'm looking at this here, this it looks like the road was moved. When I say moved, the picture itself is showing. So this right here is this right here. This right here is actually here. Right. Exactly. Okay. Right. And we just didn't color it blue. Right. 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 Uh, too many colors. It would have been hard to follow. Uh, so A and B, so it's essentially in a corner, up in this corner, have a couple parking spaces okay. that it, it would impact. In option C, since the express lanes are being built outside and existing and shifted south, uh, one of the ramp lanes would be over um, a basketball court and part of the skate park. Are these are, is this flyovers? These would be a ramp that connects up to the interstate that eventually goes to I-4. Right, right. The, 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 the express lane fly, bridge. Fly, yeah, it'd be fly, a, fly it'd be over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not, so it is being built on, but at the same time, the, it's a flyover. Yeah, the court would remain, we'd build a bridge over the top of it. Okay. Uh, 
and the piers would be placed so they wouldn't impact the court. Okay. Uh, and option D, because the express lanes are built to the outside, the other side, there'd be no impact to the court. Okay. We could have a series of boards that talk about uh, historic properties and the process of looking at actual effects, visual effects, and noise effects. And then we have identified what those structures are um, that are eligible in these areas, um, including in segment 2B. Uh, oh, no, don't worry. We have the Tampa Heights area. We have the Ybor City area. So we we've identified what are, what are these are historic buildings? structures. So we've done a detailed survey. Uh, identified those structures that uh, Let's see what's that, the, the Wells are House on potentially Columbia. historic in nature. They may be on the National Register of Historic Places, uh -huh. or they may contribute to the character of the historic district. And what happens to these buildings? Uh, in most cases, uh, there would be no impact to the buildings. There's a few, uh, one of which is the Faith Temple uh, Church that's the uh, Junior Civic Association. Right. So what, uh, owned what by, owned by DOT, a couple of the options as DOT purchased it years ago was because it was going to be needed for the widening of the interstate. It would uh, need to be acquired or moved uh, okay. as part of three of the options. And what about the German American Club? It would stay just as it is. It would stay as it is. Um, would it, it, but in one of the options, there would be a flyover that it would be close? closer, but it wouldn't impact the structure. Okay. That's when we get into things like the ways and visual, or will there be an effect of those? We still have to assess some of that, but it at least tells us what's there. Uh, this just shows the structures that are uh, uh, in the Tampa Heights Historic District, and we also have those contributing structures. Oh, that, that many? The, the things in the red? Those are structures that contribute to the nature of Tampa Heights being a historic district. Okay. We're not impacting all of those. It's just identifying those structures uh -huh. that and contribute. And non-contributing. And there are others that are older, but they don't necessarily contribute to the character of Tampa Heights history. Okay. Uh, we have the same thing in the Ybor area where it has both the, you know, uh, historic district, but it's also a national historic landmark district. So it has a little higher level of. So this all is national historic district. Right. It's, it's like up, the whole thing. It's literally. split up into pieces. Yes. So here is all this yellow historic. Um, this just shows the overall extent of the area. It's not necessarily this spot. Right now, but this picture. all this yellow here is that all considered historic? Yeah, if you look at that, that little box there is really this box here. Right. No, I'm looking so at that. I'm looking at all of the yellow, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah that's all part of the National Historic Landmark District. So this entire, technically, this entire area. The interstate, is all the, split, uh, the interstate split through it back in 50 years ago. I see. And, okay, so we'll just continue on this part because uh, I just want to ask one more question. Where would... There be based on what we saw of the options A, B, C, D, F, G. There is no F, G. Um, where, where are there any connect, additional connect, connections made from north to south? In the Ebor area, there's nothing new that's proposed with any of the options. Uh, essentially, once we get to about 21st Street, uh, there would be no additional widening or right of way acquisition to the outside at all. Uh, all of that would just occur to the west of there, closer to the interchange. Is there any, when I say changes, is there anything that's saying, hey, let's uh, connect this road, let's connect this road, let's connect this road, because making bridges or tunnels? Or... In option C and D, where all of this is not reconstructed, uh -huh. then it's impossible to stick a new connection through because the height of the road may not be such that you can punch a road through. Okay. Options A and B, there's more of a, a chance but because some of the elevations that you're coming down to, uh, if we have a ramp connection to 14th and 15th, then those ramps come down lower and there's no way to get underneath them to be able to cross. Uh, and at this point, there's, there's been no uh, discussion about any additional connections in the Ebor area. Even, so, even though it, with A and B, those connections have been identified or there aren't? A and B, we have a few up in the Tampa Heights, uh, DME Moore area that we're able to do. But here, this area, we really haven't. 
uh, found any good way to provide any additional connections. Is this will this be part of the greenway? Will there be a greenway along uh, here? There's not a plan for that. Okay. Uh, the city is looking at a green spine connection, a trail connection that would essentially be a uh, from Cass Street all the way up Nuccio Parkway up 15 to. Cascaden Park. Okay. Um, we've gone through other elements, including air quality, uh, noise evaluation, uh, and we've got an alternatives analysis that matrix that really shows the differences between, let's say, A, B, C, and D in segment two B, which is the downtown area. So, so let's looking look at, at traffic. Let's... We're looking at transits, neighborhood connections, cultural resources, parks, impacts. Uh, natural resources, wetlands, uh, right-of-way impacts, physical noise-sensitive sites, how many may be in, involved, as well as cost. So It's a complete detailed matrix that's online, uh, that we'll, we'll have online tomorrow. Uh, and it's in the handout as well. Right. Okay. Uh, it shows everything from every section. Yeah, it's, it's hard to visualize uh, like we did earlier, we had to go back to ABCD to talk to talk about this because it is a little bit difficult to visualize numbers. Sure. I mean, I know you're. And in the Western area, we don't have ABCD. We only have the one option, so it's either do nothing or do something. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, We're too nice. Go this way. Okay. We're in zone six, where we talk about opportunities for connections, mm -hmm. and we talked about a few of those already. We have. Uh, bicycle and pedestrian, pedestrian connections through the course of other greenways, the West Tampa Greenway, uh, Tip Ice Greenway we mentioned before, Green Spine. Some of these things as they connect through, uh, accommodating those. So, so future, possibly funded, this is a potential bike lane, the Ola Central Bicycle Boulevard. Right. So there's there is actually uh, a construction schedule for that for 2023. It says. That's what it looks like. Yes. And this is on. What, what, is it on Ola itself? It looks like Central and Ola. So depending on where you are, it might be on Central for some, and then Ola on another. Okay, and this would go up how far? I uh, I don't have that. Okay. Handy. Okay. Um, in the West Shore area, we are opening connections at Rio Street uh -huh. that don't exist today. Also, Occident and Trask okay. are roads that are dead end, but they'll be connected through. At Trask, there's a future intermodal center that the department purchased oh, a few years right. back, and it would connect directly to Trask. Right. Okay. Um, in the downtown area, there's a few connections, and there's a map that shows it a little bit better in options A and B to connect Emily Street, Alley, 26th, and Plymouth that are currently cut off. Okay, so this is this is the downtown interchange. Downtown right here. interchange, uh, and in these options, we're able to reconnect some streets that didn't exist, as well as provide a, a connection of a, a gap in a frontage road uh, that doesn't exist right now um, just north of Robles Park uh, and then reconnecting Central Avenue uh, underneath uh, the interstate through there. Um, we have in option C and D because we're not reconstructing, we're not able to reconnect those streets. This shows the Robles Park area a little bit better where we'd be looking at vehicle connections at Adelie and Emily and then Plymouth and 26 would be more of pedestrian and bike connections across connecting the parks. Okay. And this shows some additional things of improving connections, of opening up some overpasses that currently are closed with slope walls, put in straight walls, allows more light through. Um, downtown Tampa area creating an underpass plaza. Uh, so additional parking and how, how do you yeah. mitigate the smog? Because I'll tell you what, when the bus stop used to be there in the Marion Street, instead of Marion Street, it used to be under the express route. I don't know if you remember. I really liked it because you didn't get wet. For some reason, if you ride a bus, it's okay for you to get wet. I don't necessarily agree. Uh, but the smog from from both from the cars and from the buses. How do you mitigate that? How do you get well, the carbon out of there? Well, one of the things we'd be looking at is, right now it's about a 14 foot clearance of those bridges. Uh -huh. uh, if we rebuild the bridges, we can build them up maybe another six or eight feet higher so that it allows a little bit more air to get through or flow in, in 
some more light to get through as, as well. But there's no, there's at, no at least at the moment, system. at the moment, there's no pumping system right. or any kind of. I've seen on some roads uh, on Florida Avenue, they're building these stations. It goes into the ground and it converts carbon or something. How does that work? Uh, Are you familiar? I'm no? not familiar with that. Okay. Um, and then we have opportunities to, to do these type of things, these pedestrian improvements across on a number of different uh, cross streets, uh, as well as open up access from Julie B. Lane, potentially provide some parking underneath there uh, and, and update the circulation uh, as we add ramps from North Boulevard to and from the West. Uh, so the Brown. The Brown is a local street. So you have Laurel Street. Okay. Green Street right now comes through on the back side, and this is North Boulevard. Right. And then the, here's Jefferson High School. Uh, Blake High School. Uh, Blake. Blake. Blake High School, yeah. correct. Yeah, Blake. And so that's just the road. And then it's just improving some circulation that connects in with Blake. We're still working with the school district on details, depending on which option. But it shows how we can provide some additional circulation and potentially some parking for Julian B. Lane Overflow for peak events. Okay. We've got, um, in all four options, the ramps at Florabraska, because of their close distance to Martin Luther King, um, we show how that distance is not extremely safe in terms of an operational, so why they would need to be closed uh, and some of the crashes that have occurred. Well, hold on. Let's, let's go back to this one because this is, this is the one that you and I have talked about at length. Uh, a few years ago, we had a lady, and you see her fingers going here, but you're not paying attention to this area. How are people going to get in? The people who live here, they don't have access to the road. How does, how did, how far have we gone from meeting her objective to sure. getting our objective, the FDOT's objective? Sure, a few, a few things. Um, Relative to the interchange, a, options A and B and option C, I believe, provides a connection to 14th and 15th, as opposed to just at 21st, 22nd. Okay. So, so that helps alleviate certainly traffic that in the VME board area can okay. still access 14th. Uh, in the western side, we have uh, we're going to reconnect a frontage road that currently dead ends just south of Martin Luther King um, that would connect down all the way to Emily Natalie and in front of uh, in the park area so you provide a connection for an exit from MLK back into the neighborhood that currently would have to take Martin Luther King and, and filter you know through we can punch through straight through instead of having to deal with some traffic congestion along and Central it would stop at Fort Brasco you guys um, yeah, it currently it goes up from Florabraska, but there's a gap in the frontage road right now. So we would connect that all the way. Through. No, I was saying, don't, yeah. would it go down and it south? And it continues, yeah, south to Columbus. Okay. So that helps alleviate some of those issues. And then in the northbound direction, we have an entrance ramp in this direction to alleviate that and to uh, improve the continuity of the frontage road on the north side as well. Okay. Uh, this shows really a map of how someone would go uh, without the ramps at Fort Basket. Yeah, I, 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 honestly, on the floor of Alaska, I don't have an opinion uh, either way because one, I, I, I don't drive, I'm always a passenger. Uh, we, I rare, when we do go through Florabraska is when we are going to Ybor City. Um, that usually takes us there. But I've never gotten on the on-ramp of Florabraska. So, so you're saying that the, the Central Avenue would be... It would be a, there's a frontage road, not necessarily just Central. Uh, but frontage road that runs along the west side of the interstate. But you there. also said at some point that central, central would be connected. Central is connected. And central will be connected, you know, further south, closer to Perry Harbor. Right, so right now central is here and it kind of stops. It's a dead end. Sort of, yeah. It's, You're it's, saying it's, still, that. it's challenging to get over and across, uh, but central will be reconnected. Okay. Uh, this just shows how we're accommodating transit from the perspective of the transit corridor. Uh, that's that would be in the center, the options A and B, uh, along 275 and then I-4. So essentially, through the downtown interchange, it would be this dashed dashed line we have, and that's where it would be located. That's where the transit corridor. That would be a transit corridor. It might look like something like this if it's built. So to give you an idea of. The general purpose lanes, the express lanes, and the transit corridor. 
That's a we lot would, of tax dollars. We wouldn't be building a transit now, but we'd be keeping space. Yeah. That, I think that's. I think that, that is one of the things that is the missing link between what's being proposed and what is happening. That we continue to build the road, but. We don't see any progress on whether it's rail or buses. So at, at some point, those two need to come together. Yeah, as they the really transit do. agencies kind of agree or figure out what they want to do, we've at least left a space with these options to, to use this but, as an opportunity. The West Shore yeah, we're talking the, transit, and this just shows in the West Shore area where the intermodal center area was, was purchased um, a few years back off of Trask and just north of the interstate, what that would look like as well as a platform for future rail come into the platform, exit the train, uh, have a people mover to take you over to the transit station to show how that would connect okay. uh, with other facilities. And they're really how are how are transit decisions made? A lot of the questions you that's you a good have how are transit decisions who makes made? those decisions? How the DOT does invest in transit, and then who really funds the actual infrastructure? And how well, let's, so when we talk about transit. Some people talk think that's roads, but let's talk about transit as a mass transit. So you're telling me that these local agencies are the ones that are making the decisions as to whether we have buses or do not have buses. Correct. Is that yeah, correct. Much it? Yeah, T Barta, Tampa Bay Regional Transit Authority is kind of the umbrella over the Tampa Bay area in terms of transit. That includes Hearts with Hillsborough County. Uh -huh. We have PSTA and Pinellas, and then uh, Pasco County. Uh, so these transit. are the people who are making the decisions as to whether or not we do have buses or we don't have buses. Right, in terms of funding and, and things they pursue and they can do. Uh, the DOT looks at ways to, to partner with them, so they fund many of the studies that these agencies do for transit initiatives, look at grants, uh, as well as uh, project-specific grants that they can help fund. Uh, for instance, uh, I think they've funded right now the um, the, the streetcar. Streetcar's uh -huh. free for a year. DOT's paid for that, mm -hmm. So, as an example. That, that, so what I'm hearing is, is that the Department of Transportation can build roads and build do capital investment type projects, but maintenance and managing is, to goes agency. to the local right. agencies. In order for the transit agency to be able to get federal transit dollars, they have to demonstrate that they can fund and operate and maintain whatever money they get. So the funds, uh, citizens of Hillsborough County said we're tired of waiting. So we have a new search. Right, and there's there's an opportunity then to have some local funds that can be used as match to be able to get in some transit dollars from a federal perspective. So. Moving along. Okay. Where do you want to go? Okay. I'll show you these. I think we've already seen the actually the maps. no the the back. big map yeah we that's the western area before that show what different options and alternatives look like. Okay. But what we've done is we've taken those and created photo simulations, photo simulations and 3D visualizations to give you a better perspective of what that means than just looking at a drawing on a, a you piece of that? Simulations? How many simulations? Photo <laughs> we have over 100 before and after renderings we've done at ground level, uh -huh. showing what the different options would look like from different places. And then we've also put together videos that you can see on the TV screens, as if you're an eagle driving, you know, flying over the interstate, so you better understand what the different roadway pieces look like. Well, from my experience, I see very few eagles and I see lots of vultures because the hot air coming from the highway, they can just circle and circle. But it does give you a, a different a 3D perspective of what this is looking at the interchange, uh, I-275, and it looks like we're going south. Uh, so there's Palm Avenue, uh, crossing Palm 7. Uh, it shows in green. Uh, express lanes, and this is an option A. We're in the option A uh, four, and it shows the different ramp connections going into downtown in yellow on the general purpose lanes. What is it? There's Perry Harvey Senior Park to your left, which is past that at Orange Avenue. We're really looking as if we're going towards the airport. Towards the airport. So yeah, we're in downtown. Here's Morgan Street. 
We have Tampa Street. What's all the white underneath? Cement, what I call cement, but what is the white in between the roads? In between? Yeah, the yeah. This is uh, where the transit uh, envelope would be. Okay. Um, and this would be the access points from Tampa Street. The, uh, the ramps leading into Ashley. Crossing over the river, we have Julian B. Lane Park. To the left, it's before it was constructed. Uh, Lake High School to the right. Here's North Boulevard. I think this ends at this point. We've, we've caught the tail end of this video, but we have those for all four options. So this one, this option B, and we're going southbound from USF. Okay. So we're crossing Emily. So this is Robles Park. So we're going south. What's that road on the side, side of each? In blue. In blue. Where the person's crossing the. Oh, this would be street connection. Like a frontage road? Yeah, these are frontage roads that are there today. Telefero um, and um, can't recall on the, the other side of the road. So this is where we have, here's Florabraska. Working our way towards the downtown area. We have Columbus Drive. So it just gives you a little different perspective than the line drawing um, to understand a little bit better what it would look like if you're driving. Uh, so we have these. We also, I'll, I'll come to the uh, right side here. Okay. We have the other options, design options as well. So we have all four options to be able to see. So, so what's, what's happening here? This is here? looking, looks like we're towards the end of this one as well. So here's North Boulevard. I think we're, uh, oh, it's Julie B. Lane. So these videos are tied to audio that goes with them and a voiceover, someone describing what's happening. So now we're going over the river, going the other way we were on the other one. So we have existing lanes and then the express lane bridge and option C that goes to the south and to the east side. Uh, so here's and Ashley, so, there's so Waterworks we, Park to your left. Something you talk, we talked about earlier, you were talking about the roller coasters and one of the reasons that the section over the river, there's a lot of accidents and crashes because of the roller coaster. Well, now, the how, roller coaster do you, effect as well how do you exits. how do you handle the roller coaster effect? By re well, in this option, we're we're not handling it as well as we could because we're not reconstructing that road. It's going to stay where it is, uh, and some of this is what's there today. The only thing that would be new would be the express lanes in green. Okay. This option C. And option D. Option D is another. Oh, okay, one. good. Now, so Martin Luther King going south. south. So in option D, there's we're not reconstructing the road. Okay. So you see existing. This is essentially the existing road. Uh, it's there. I think we're at widening a lane or so northbound, but that's feeding traffic uh, to break that. So here northbound. When you say northbound, um, where are you adding the lane? I see the, on the edge. On the outside we are, and in this direction we are. But it, here's a Robles Park where we can't reconnect Adelie and Emily because we're not reconstructing the full roadway. Uh, here's Florabraska. Uh, the lighter shade is what's there today. And then uh, some of this is darker just because we have to resurface some of it as we move. Okay. That way or so. And we have all four options. Those will be on the website uh, with the voiceover. These are kind of neat. What we've done is we've taken any of the options, so options A, B, C, D in the downtown area, and we can zoom into those with the, with the smart board. So we can pull up a, a location, let's say at, uh, at So we can see what the existing looks like mm -hmm. uh, looking down Palm. Uh, option A and B and then C and D. So that perspective from all of the options. So we have over 100 before and afters at ground level. So you understand give, a little give bit me better an a. So an A shows rebuilding uh, the bridges. Uh -huh. uh, this is this ends up being, I think, a flyover that goes to I-4. And option B. Option C. So option B, go back to B, please. Okay, so that's where the ch uh, the church would be moved from that location, and that area would be filled in. Okay, correct. Right. Option C would remain. Okay. And option D, the express lanes are on this side, so 
it's where that, that location is. So you can go back to the map and you know, zoom into many other areas. We could look at, um, let's say from 14th. So this is what it looks like today, looking at 14th going south. Uh -huh. Here's I-4. And options A, rebuild the bridge uh -huh. um, and provide vertical walls. Option B would be the same. Option C is where the bridge would remain that's there, and then this would be the express lane bridge. Okay. And then option D, it's essentially the same. So you kind of go back to existing and see what the differences are. So we've done that um, at multiple locations. This will be on the website next week. We've got to reprocess this image so that it loads quickly. Uh, but this will be posted so that you can when zoom you say in. next week since we're videoing, when? when this will be so, give, right general, after Memorial Day. After Memorial Day. Sometime. Probably the day after okay. Memorial Day. Uh, but you'll be able to do the same thing at your computer at home. You'll be able to zoom into this map, click on an image, see what it looks like existing versus option C and ABC. We did this um, 20 years ago. These same images were taken at historic structures. Remember, we talked to historic structures before and what the visual effect are. So we're now able to compare what they looked like 20 years ago in that preferred option versus the options here. Okay. It allows us to assess visually, is there an impact? Okay. Um, zone, five. zone 7 talks about the Northwest Expressway, the connection to the veterans. So essentially, along State Road 60, north of Cyprus, and the connection into the airport, and out Courtney Campbell and north up into the veterans. Uh, in this area, we've got the, in green, um, express lane connection to the airport, and then connecting to the Veterans Expressway. Is there a green yeah. uh, way here? Like, because we have, a bicycle location that we can walk. Is there anything that connects the existing greenway down there yes. to this? Yes, uh, there's a path that runs along Courtney Campbell. It connects to what's called the, the U path, which runs along the airport. Uh, and then we have the West Tampa Greenway that comes up and connects, and we'll actually be able to cross under and then run along the north side, essentially the north side of 275 as it makes its way down. So that, that, that would be more of a continuous that's in the future, connection. but not, not yet there. There are, there are gaps right now in that, that network, uh, and many of those, those gaps would be filled as part of this project, depending on where, what location you're at. Okay. Uh, this is a evaluation matrix for just the Northwest Expressway piece. Okay. Uh, then we have concept plans for what's the supplemental EIS part of the project. Um, SEIS, we learned that earlier, but we forgot by now. Sure, it's uh, I-275 essentially from Howard Franklin. No, 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 I meant what does oh, SEIS? Uh, it's a reevaluation of the original environmental, environmental impact, impact statement. Impact statement, okay. So one of the things we're looking at is what we call a no further action, which means in the area of West Shore, it was approved to build the outer roadways, mm -hmm. uh, but not the express lanes. Correct. So one option is to build the rest of what was approved, mm -hmm. but not build anything else beyond what was already accepted, including in the downtown area. So no further action downtown means don't build anything. Right. In the West Shore area, it's a little bit different. But, we, but it, it, we're still comparing those in our evaluation matrix. But even then, uh, on the no further action, we would still have uh, the using a part of the lane on 275 north and south. Um, Does that still happen? No. Okay. That would basically be doing nothing except for this area. Okay. We'd be rebuilding downtown, the West Shore Interchange. Okay. Uh, and then we have what that looks like with the connection to the Northwest Expressway. Okay. This is the build option in the West Shore area, uh, which includes both the no further action, so the outer roadways, but also the introduction of the express lanes as well as the transit corridor. Uh, well, the transit corridor transit was built. Envelope. That, that envelope was built when uh, I 4 275 was redone oh, okay. some years ago. So, That's why we have that big green space in the middle. Because we were trying. I, right, on I 4 and then right. a portion between downtown and West Shore. Right. You're correct. 
uh, but the downtown area didn't have it, and the West Shore area through the, the State Road 60 interchange didn't have it. Um, so this shows the, the connection of the express lanes going north. Uh, the express lanes would also have an interchange at Trask. I believe it's Trask. Uh, I might be wrong. It might be Himes. Yeah. Okay. I don't recall since I'm not working on this part of the project. Okay. Uh, but I believe there's an express lane direct access uh, into the eastern part of the western area. Well, there's a large group here, and we've seen that map, so let's. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have the, the segment between West Shore and downtown, um, which is segment 2A, uh, where the express lanes would just need to be filled in in the middle. And as you mentioned, it was wide out enough for transit and express lanes. In this part, we'll just be building the express lanes in the center. So the express so lanes would start there? Uh, well, the express lanes would... Uh, no, I'm saying that's where they would start then. Yeah. For this segment. Right. And then we go to the next segment, which is uh, the downtown area. And we've walked through these, you know, at various stages before. We had options A, B, C, and D. This is just the detail of all, all four. Uh, options A, with reconstructing in yellow and in orange, the uh, outer roadways, the general lanes, and then introducing express lanes in green that run from those that were built near West Shore all the way through I-4, hitting the point where they were already, you know, built wide enough. Option A provides a connection into the express lanes to and from the north, but the connection ends and, and terminates uh, around Martin Luther King. Uh, so they would not continue beyond north of there and uh, up towards Seminole Heights. So when you talk about um, reconstruction, uh, where where are what we call the flyovers? Um, there's the, biggest, the one that, that people know most in terms of flyover is the south to the east. Right. Um, right now it's a single lane right. that connects you to I-4. Um, what we'd be looking at with all four options is to make that a two-lane exit, two-lane flyover. Uh, and in addition to that is if you're going to Ebor, instead of going into traffic and mixing, you would actually have a direct connection into Ebor off of that ramp so you wouldn't have to mix in. In option A, not only is, do you have two lanes on the general lane purpose, but you also have an express lane that's making that same movement. So it goes from one to essentially three lanes. Will this all be elevated? Uh, this would be elevated. There's, there's. Because right now, if there is no elevation. Um, right now, as far when I say elevation, I mean when I stand on one side of uh, this garage area, and to the other, I can't see this end to that end. So uh, we go down. It's yeah. It's, is there it's still going to be a, a down? Yeah. Essentially, what you have today is what's at the lowest level, which is ground level, is the northbound movement. Mm -hmm. You have the westbound movement is second level, and then it's just that quote flyover. It's really at the third level. So the 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 first level remains the first level. Correct. Correct. But that, how does that how does that fix malfunction junction? What it does is it allows um, a separation of traffic so they're not all coming in to one point past it there's separation of traffic that goes directly to Ebor instead of joining we also have an exit to Ebor back here instead of further downstream so instead of mixing with everybody before they exit they're actually exiting beforehand uh, to improve the operation downstream. That helps. We're also flattening out some of the curves, both from a, a horizontal curve, so a turning perspective, as well as an up and down uh, roller coaster. Where would where would we where would where would there be transit here? Since uh, we have a transit envelope here, what happens in this section again? Where where would the transit would continue and run down center all the way through the downtown area and then work its way towards so the either above the road or below the it road? It would likely it would most likely be at the same level as the inner express lanes because they're already at that level, so they would continue to run down center. Okay. So whatever level those lanes happen to be at, that would be the level of transit. We looked at opening the space a little bit more in the downtown area for a platform similar to the West Shore area. Okay. In my, so a platform, that, Tico? platform would likely be yeah, just south of Tico, so Tampa, Florida area. Um, 
and then a potential would be transit station wherever whoever figures out where they want to put. What are the R's? Um, the colors you see, the blue blue shades, those are property of the Department of Transportation already owns uh -huh. uh, that have been acquired over the last 20 years. The pink shade would show additional right away that would be needed. And it shows the same, you know, right away would be needed for all the different options. Mm -hmm. And in the bubbles, the red bubbles, uh, the R's are residential relocations, and then the B's would be business relocations. Okay. So as part of the right away acquisition process, they would know that they'd also be relocating a resident, residential unit or a business unit. So as part of the, the purchase, they would need, they would be providing then residential relocation expenses and benefits as well as just buying the property. <clears throat> so just staying focused a little bit here. Sure. At the same time though, as this is being done, is there any plans to work on Florida Avenue and Nebraska Avenue to mitigate the overflow from construction because we're going to have anywhere you go regardless of whether we do something or do nothing florida and nebraska still remain a big chunk of traffic that is used for for those areas and it's been divided in such a way that you don't have from my experience on nebraska avenue you don't have a good flow you just don't have a good flow. On Florida Avenue, you have a better flow. There's more, more traffic more going on there. Way, it's one way right. there that helps separate and make more efficient green times. Right, but the then we're in Nebraska, because you don't have that flow and you don't have uh, the buses running properly, you don't have as much growth. Here, things that are south of, let's say about Osborne or so, where it's just a one way, you have very, very limited small business growth. Would, is, is FDOT in this plan, part of this plan, doing anything to look at Nebraska and Florida Avenue to say, hey, if we're building or whatever we're doing, we've got to work on those roads. Uh, off-system improvements will be part of the evaluation, you know, as we go forward and figure out which option will be know better what improvements might be needed where. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be one of the options we have to do something in a different location than in another one. Okay. So once we look at that, then we're able to assess whether, you know, a cross street or a parallel roadway would need something. I know the department has committed to improving transit service during construction. Um, as part of the overall TV so that would project. be that would be like a capital investment that we were talking about earlier. It, it might be to help improve, um, you know, instead of the, the bus running every half hour stops, maybe it's fifteen or ten minute stops. So more you know, more frequent headways. So there's a possibility that there would be that F I could allocate funds for. Uh, it might be, it capital might be, investment. It of, might be to, to purchase another 10 buses or 20 buses to be able to operate more regular service in okay. those areas okay. to help alleviate some of the, um, some of the, um, you know, mitigate some of those things. Okay. Okay. I, I got to stop this. Okay. Okay. So we're so still looking. Option A. We moved to option B. Option and B. And the difference between the two was. Uh, the express lane connection didn't go north from uh, the 275 I-4 junction. Okay, so the express, express so lane connection it, doesn't go north. What does that mean to tra for, for actual just traffic? What does that um, mean? With traffic-wise, if you wanted to get into the express lanes and you're coming from the north, you'd have to filter through downtown to be able to get into them. Uh, so when you say no, filter through downtown, do you mean you'd get have to off? Exit, exit? You'd have to exit, go onto a city street, uh, and then you know, get to the street where the entrance point is, either west or east. Okay. Um, or continue on the general purpose lanes and as further south, there's an entrance around Howard. And here? Uh, in that direction, there'll be another entrance, but it's past the up. Summit Expressway. Okay. So basically, the ex eliminating the express lanes right here would slow traffic down, you know, in you'd such a way. You'd have more traffic in the general purpose lanes. Cause you, you would have some more traffic, would slow it down, but at the same time, um, because it's slower, it might be a little bit safer. Uh, if we're going at 50 and 60 miles an hour around these turns and up through here, it's it's dangerous. Yeah, it's uh, the danger 
the danger remains. Uh, I wish we could do something about the motorcycles at night. It's terrible. You know, they race you there. I've, I've given the, the I, I, painted line, right? Yeah, I've given them an idea. The police department say, listen, why don't you track them with a helicopter? At least the lights, because it's an incredible hazard. So when anybody's racing through here, whether it's a car or a bike or, or motorcycles, it's, an, it's, it's a danger to the people here and the people there as well. Um, so I could see where having an east west expressway would make sense because the people who are coming from the east uh, wanting to get to say in Petersburg, which is the, your your traditional route, they wouldn't even have to bother to be intermingled in uh, Function Junction. They would just go right over to Function Junction. Right. Cool. All right. And if that's the case in the other one as well. I mean, they can do that in option A as well. Uh, what it allows us to do is narrow the footprint a little bit to the north, so we have a little fewer right of acquisition needed to the north. Okay. Hold on, he's wrapping around. Okay, dude. Okay, we're into option C and D, where if you recall that those were ones where we kept the existing roadway and we were building the express lanes to the outside. Can you start again? Sure. C and D? Go so, Sure. Option C and D. Uh, we're different than A and B because we're not reconstructing all of the existing interstate system. Mm -hmm. So what's in white is essentially what's there today. The express lanes are in green. Those would be what would be constructed in this area, as you see, to the south and to the east of the existing system. Option D, we'll show you later, it goes to the opposite side, to the west and to the north. Uh, we still have some things, some features that we have in the others, including exit ramp and entrance at North Boulevard. Uh, we would still have the flyover of being two lanes and the exit to Ebor. Um, we wouldn't have the express lane connection to the north. Uh, in but you would, have, you would have connectivity here, more connectivity? Um, not necessarily. We still have an exit that takes you to 14th and 15th. Well, what about you, the central that you said central could? Uh, it would be no different than what it is today because we're not rebuilding the, the bridge structure there. And then at Adelie and Emily, we're not rebuilding the interstate through there, so there's no way to, to join those road, rejoin those roads across there. Um, it's option C and then an option D. Instead of being on the Selman Heights National Bridge. Uh, okay, so this is this is option D. Okay. Similar to C. Uh, C had the express lanes to the south and to the east. In option D, we flipped the express lanes to the other side, to the west and to the north. Uh, everything else is the same. We've got the exit to North Boulevard. We have the two flyover lanes. Um, not much is different other than what side of the road things are situated. Again, no express lane connection to the north. Okay. Um, and then as we continue to the east end of the mm -hmm. SEIS, the study brings us to 50th Street. So we have the express lanes. Uh, providing a connection to the uh, Selman Expressway connector. And then the express lanes will continue. Uh, to make some space here, we have to slide one of the ramps out. Uh, at 50th Street, the entrance ramp would require a little bit of right of way uh, up near 50th Street, but that would essentially be the end of the project uh, at that point. And connect into another project that had been approved uh, on I 4 to build express lanes uh, through uh, all the way up through I-75. Does any of this connect with 301? Um, 301 directly. Well, I-4 does have an interchange with 301. Right. I know how it. But but I'm saying, is there any? Is there actually any change going on in 301 to make it a part of that system as well? Um, I I'm not familiar enough with that project okay. to know, but okay. the express lanes do continue out towards. I, towards is there the any uh, amenities no, being done here? No, greenways? There's, no, there's no right of acquisition. The outer no, roadways have been built. Green greenways. No. Uh, uh, bike at point, lanes. At this point, no. Okay. Uh, the outer roadways were built a number of years ago on I-4, and we're essentially filling in the middle with uh, uh, express lanes, and then the transit through this area. Uh, would likely be elevated anyway to get through the summon connector. Oh, so they, they would be elevated. So it'd be the transit would come up, uh, likely up and over. So that's why we kind of squeeze the median a little bit through this area. And that, where would the train be? The train would be on a. You just have bridge piers. Okay. So it doesn't have to be as wide. It's not at the same level. Okay. It would be up a little bit higher because it has to clear up over 
the sum in any uh, connector anyway. But as you make your way further to the east, that would be in the center. Well, Jeff, thank you very much. I appreciate um, it. What? Well, the other thing I just wanted to show you real quick. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, yeah. When we can pan from here, we've got stations set up to have the those same videos we saw, but with audio. And those are the, the versions of the video that will be on the website. So you'll be narrate, basically narrated audio for those flyover, uh, for those uh, fly-through videos. And then we have the draft documents that we've prepared so far that assess impacts from air quality to wetlands to uh, contamination, uh, potential. So how many of these can I take? Uh, these are our, our display copy, but they will be posted on the website. Because I've read most of the, there were 55 uh, studies that were done, and then out of those 55, oh, the yeah, I can't say that I've read every single one, but I can these, tell you that I've opened every single one and skimmed through a lot of pictures. These are draft documents that we've been preparing that lead into the ultimate supplemental EIS documents that assess impacts from uh, noise contours, sociocultural effects, uh, cultural resources, which is historic properties. The, this, this document here, and, and this is for everybody watching, if you can get a copy of this electronically, do so, because this tells you a lot about the history of Tampa. The same thing with this document right over here. Uh, I've looked at similar documents, and it's I've learned a lot more about Tampa than yeah, ever before. For sure. Uh, pond siding reports, we looked at drainage and where water goes, air quality. We've got the preliminary engineering. These are draft documents, and they'll be updated. Um, the air quality is, since you did bring up air quality, air quality is a big deal. And the thing is that without putting in something that literally is taking the carbon out of there uh, and changing the limits, uh, which politicians have been known to do, and you're not a politician, and neither am I, but politicians have been known to do where they just, okay, well, we can increase the parts per million, but is there anything that FDOT would would take on its own and say, hey, listen, this area is going to have a lot of carbon. Oh, yeah. This area is going to have a lot of carbon. Um, any? Is there anything that to, to take out the carbon out of the air? Anything? Well, some of the things as the, the air quality models that we work with, mm -hmm. um, as the future moves on, you know, similar to the 1970s when we had leaded gas, right? There have been improvements in elements that relate to air quality, improving air quality over time, and that will continue. Uh, hybrid cars, electric cars, and things like that that will put less uh, toxins into the air. As we do things like look at roadway improvements like these, as a lot of a lot of times the air quality is diminished as traffic goes slower. So there's more idling time, there's more time where the vehicle's sitting and just kind of chugging out its emissions. As traffic moves, those emissions don't really just pocket up themselves, you know, it, it kind of is much more efficient. So there's less air quality issues as the speeds in, in improve and increase. So air quality, as we looked at the traffic before, we were showing the speeds are going to increase over doing nothing. Air quality will actually get better. Uh, with projects like this. What about trees? Is there a, so I was told recently with like Hillsborough Avenue um, and we're going to see what we can do to mitigate and maybe reduce the speed so we can add trees but when it, the speeds were above 45 miles an hour the Department of Transportation say no we don't really want to put trees on the road because it, it's a, it becomes a problem. So it's two problems at once. Um, trees help the carbon, they help the environment they also help the aesthetics of, especially when you're getting close to the downtown area. Having all the trees there would really make things nice and pretty. And okay, yeah, every few years we'll have a hurricane. Right, and it, the department is committed to things like Tampa Heights Greenway, which creates a buffer. In that buffer, there's opportunities for vegetation, landscaping, and, and those kind of elements that can help create not only a visual buffer but also a, you know maybe an air quality buffer we don't take that into account when we do the analysis we assume everything's like barren area we don't claim credit for any you know vegetation that may exist or not exist in the analysis so it's a straight up what is happening from the emissions of the vehicles you know 
not saying that there's going to be a wall that's going to help absorb some of that. We ignore that okay. in the analysis. Okay. Thanks but very there much. there are certainly things that can improve, you know, beyond just, you know, reducing congestion. Okay, cool. Thanks very much, Jeff. I appreciate it. Thank you. As yeah, always. Cool. Yeah. Please be sure to attend this very important public hearing June 11th at 6 p.m. in Tampa.